everybody, welcome back. Let's say hi to our friend, Mr. John Baptiste. Hello, John. Hello. How's everything in your neck of the woods? Oh, it's, it's, it's good, you know, as good as it can be. I'm feeling good, how about yourself? I'm feeling all right, I'm hopped up on the Malamars. Do you, you ever eat the Malamars, John? Oh no, I don't eat, what, what's that? You've never had a Malamar? It's a I've seasonal cookie. No, I've never had a Malamar. Hold on, one second. You're kidding me. I have never had one. That, that's a Malamar. I'm going to send you some Malamars. You know who's going to send you Malamars? Who Malamars are going to send you some Malamars. Why should I send you Malamars when I'm giving them free airtime right now? I it's was gonna... wondering, hey, but hey, stock me up. I'm, I'll take it. I love it's, cookies. It, it's, a, it's a seasonal cookie, John. They only ship them certain types times of the year because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's fudge or it's not fudge or something like that, and it melts. Oh, yeah. wow. It's Who... all a scam. Well, hey, look, I'm, I'm ready to try it out. I'm, I love cookies. I love chocolate chip cookies if they make those. Check them out. I promise you, you won't, you won't regret it. Yeah. How, did, uh, how did Farm Aid go this weekend? Oh, it's, it's a great cause, and I'm glad that I was a part of it. But I think it was, um, it was well received, and they raised somewhere upward of $40,000, something in the hour or two or well, That's shows. wonderful. That's yeah. wonderful. Great. Um, but John, uh, I, didn't, I interrupted you. You were playing the piano when I came in on you. Can, can you can, what, what were you playing there? Oh, I was just playing happy changes. I was trying to find changes, harmonic movements that have the happiness in it and trying to put myself there. Oh, I, take us there. Take us there, please. I beg you. Sure, that's the kind of music you want to hear when you're starting your date. Yes, yes, it's like I got on a good suit, <laughs> maybe a top hat, and and a, and a pair of cufflinks, and I'm and I'm 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 with somebody I love, you know, and I'm going with it. All right, that's that's my vibe for the rest of the night. We got to stick with that, even if it's only in our imagination. <laughs> John Baptiste, everybody, thank you, John. Yes, indeed, thank you, Stephen. Folks, this is a big week for both candidates because tomorrow night, Biden and Trump will square off in their first ever presidential debate, and The Late Show is going to be live. The debate will be moderated by Fox News' Chris Wallace at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. And earlier today, workers were testing out the microphones and ended up debating one of the most divisive issues facing America. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Pineapple is a fruit and does not belong on a pizza. Pizza should be bread, tomato-based, cheese, and meat and other vegetable toppings. I feel like putting pineapple on it gives the public a false sense of what pizza really is. Is it tomato and not a fruit? It is a fruit. Classic pizza debate strategy. Let your opponent talk themselves into a trap. Reminds me of the 96 debates between Bill Clinton and Bob Dole. Bob Dole believes pizza is a dinner food. What my opponent doesn't realize is, when you put pizza on a bagel, you can have pizza anytime. That's how we won. Clincher. I hope they do debate pizza toppings at tomorrow night's debate. Pineapple belongs on a pizza. Ham belongs on a pizza. Hamburgers belong on pizza, smaller pizzas belong on larger pizzas. Whatever greasy load of carbs and salt you put in front of me, I will hoover directly into the little puckery hole. Come on, man, you can't go putting pineapples on pizza, that's bananas. Putting bananas on pizza, that's pure pineapples. Back in Scranton, we kept it simple. You got your sauce, you got your sausage meats, maybe a little Pecorino Romano, none of that Monterey Jack Jack. The rare Monterey Jack joke. Just like the election, Trump is already predicting that if he loses the debate, it'll be because Biden cheated, tweeting, I will be strongly demanding a drug test of sleepy Joe Biden prior to or after the debate on Tuesday night. Prior to or after the debate? Come on, you call yourself a showman? Do it during the debate. Ooh, looks like Sleepy Joe gets performance anxiety when we're all watching and just listen to that weak stream. No way you're getting respect from Xi Jinping unless you can write your name on the Great Wall. But to his credit, Trump is willing to put his whiz where his mouth is. Whether he is or not doesn't matter, but uh, I would love to take a test and he can take a test too. 
I would love to take a test. Honestly, I'd love to get anything going flow-wise. My economic plan isn't the only thing that trickles down. Because this is where we are now. And because Trump started the whole bodily function thing, a Biden spokesperson was forced to respond. Vice President Biden intends to deliver his debate answers in words. If the president thinks his best case is made in urine, he can have at it. We'd expect nothing less from Donald Trump, who pissed away the chance to protect the lives of 200,000 Americans. Damn, Mr. Trump. That must sting like a jellyfish burn, which millions of us would be happy to help you with. So, this debate has literally become a pissing contest. Now, there's no reason to think Joe Biden is on drugs, unless you count exceeding the dosage guidelines for insure. But if he feels compelled to take this drug test, he'll need some advice on how to pass. And my writer, Django, is here to generously offer some surefire drug testing tips. Django, are you there? Thanks for being here. John Atova, Steve. And with your spirit. So how do you pass a drug test? Passing a drug test is all about confidence, you know? Whether the job is president of the United States or grocery bagger at the Yalupa Avenue Safeway from 2001 to 2003, and then again briefly in 2009. Confidence, I, I didn't know that. that. That's it? Confidence and an unlubricated condom full of grade A clean stream. Don't bother with the dark web, though. It's mad sketchy. I sent this one guy a hundred bucks. He promised he'd fax me his urine. I was waiting around at Kinko's all day. Okay, let's say you've got your clean sample. Then what? Well, when they send you off with your cup, just make sure to bring some nail clippers. Otherwise, you gotta jab open a hole in the condom with your keys. Next thing you know, you're covered in employment juice. Okay, that's truly disgusting. So if Biden does all the stuff you just said, you think he'll pass the test? Worked for me five years ago. Five years ago, Django, did, did you cheat on the drug test for this job? Uh, 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 uh my internet's going through a canyon, Steve. Uh, bye. Yeah, that was a close one. You, you didn't hang up, Django. Stephen Cobb Square cannot know that I smoke pot on the reg. I can still hear you, Django. It's also legal now. I'm already in huge trouble for selling Steve's hair to those dudes on the dark web so they can grow a Colbert clone inside a goat. My writer Django, everybody. Drop him a line, Joe. We'll be right back with Mariah Carey. You selling my hair?